when you do something good, you want to share it with others. When you receive something good, usually you want to share it with others. Sharing merit is doing something good and then sharing that with others. Others, you know that there's going to, there are going to be good results coming from the good things you've done. And you decide you don't want to keep them just for yourself. You want to share them with other people. But they have to approve. In other words, someone has passed away. If they're in a position where they can know what you're doing and they approve, that's when they get merit. They get merit from their own actions. You're simply asking them to approve of what you're doing. And they see that it's a good thing. Of course, the people around you, they, they can pick up some merit by approving as well. It's called anamotana, bunya anamotana, the merit that comes from approving of the good things that other people have done. So little of this in the world. One, people doing good things, and then two, sh people showing their approval. So it's a good thing to encourage. It's like a form of empathetic joy, which sometimes of all the Brahma-vihara seems to be the hardest one. We want people to be happy. We say, may all beings be happy. May all those who are suffering be freed from their suffering. And then we see people who are happy, and we're not inspired. They're not using their happiness well. But even in cases like that, you say, whatever happiness you do have, may you not be deprived of it. Because if you want to have other people deprived of their happiness, well, then the same principle gets applied to you. Other people may not approve of what you're doing with your happiness. But do you want them to be jealous of you? Do you want them to resent you? Well, no. But you do want to make sure that you yourself use your happiness well. As a John Fuing would used to say, you do something good in terms of being generous, and you do something good in terms of being virtuous. You take the goodness of that and you invest it again. You don't just sit there and break in the happiness. You say, I've got to devote the fact that I've got some opportunities to practice now. Because the opportunities to practice do depend on the goodness you've done in the past. So now you've got those opportunities, make the most of them. So that your happiness will be inspiring to others. As the Buddha said, when you see someone who's really suffering, you remind yourself, you've been there in the past. So when you help them, your help to them is not condescending, because you realize you've been in their position. And you'd appreciate someone showing some respect if they gave you help. Well, you would show respect to the people you're helping. As for people who are in a better position than you, you remind yourself, well, you've been there too. There's no reason to be resentful, and there's no reason to be jealous. And if you see them abusing their power, abusing their beauty, abusing their wealth, Remind yourself, well, you've probably done that too. What would you like in a case like that? Well, you hope that this person comes to his senses or her senses and realizes that they've got the opportunity to do good and here they are wasting it. So maybe they should do some more good in the world. Then you look at your opportunities. You've got a lot more opportunities than a lot of people in the world. So try to make the most of what you've got. In other words, we do the causes for happiness, not for the sake of going to heaven or just having a comfortable life, but for having the opportunity to practice to train the mind further. When you think in those ways, then happiness is a good thing. Otherwise, if you make it a case, uh, an excuse for being careless, for being callous in your attitude towards other people, you've got something that they don't have. That's going to be for your down, downfall. This is one of the ironies of happiness and samsara. People get all these rewards from doing good, and then they turn them into a reason for falling down again. You get proud, you get disdainful of others who are not as fortunate as you are. Remember, fortune comes from your good actions. And you can't measure people by what you see about their good fortune right now. There's that saying that if you want to see people's past actions, you look at their present condition. If you want to see their future condition, you look at their present actions. That's not really true. What you see now is the result of some past actions, but not all of them. It's not the case that karma is a single bank account and what you're seeing is the running balance. What you're seeing is what seeds are happen to be blossoming right now, giving rise to the plants right now. 
As for the seeds that are not giving rise to plants at the moment, you don't know what they are. So you can't measure people by where they are right now in their lives. And the question of measuring people, you want to measure them in the sense of if you see they're doing something better than you are, well, you try to do that too. If you see that they're doing something bad that you're doing bad as well, you say, well, this is what it looks like from the outside. Maybe I better change my ways. That way your, your attitude toward happiness, your happiness and the happiness of others, gets a lot more mature. It becomes the basis for saying, I want to get out of all this, find a happiness that is totally harmless, does not cause intoxication. The kind of happiness is really worth the effort that goes into creating it. <laughs>